Hello, welcome to This Family Does Everything. My name is Alexandria and this is part 12, continuing Daryl Brooks and Judge Doro. In this video, it's more like Daryl Brooks and science and it's actually pretty interesting. So let's sit back, watch, and analyze the Daryl Brooks trial. No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? <coughs> Before you do that, I'm just going to hold my jury stand for a second. Go ahead. <coughs> And high mount break, high mount brake lamp were inoperable. Do you recall that? Yes. How about the left um, brake lamp? Was that operable or inoperable? Objection. Leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. The left stop lamp was working. Now, sir, just going back again to this ball joint, you stated that. I guess, was your testimony on cross-examination that <clears throat> unless the ball and socket is separated, you can still safely operate that vehicle? Objection. Mischaracterizes what was said. Um, based on the form of the question, I'll allow the witness to answer. Yes. <clears throat> and the ball and the socket on this vehicle, were they separated? They were not. Now, your inability to fully inspect the engine, I want to direct you to that area of the vehicle. Does the engine control acceleration? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. No, it requires driver input. Does the engine control braking? No, it does not. Does the engine control steering? Objection. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. No, it does not. Does the engine control gear shifting? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. It does not. Finally, sir, you had talked about um, actually coolant or some type of water. I wasn't sure if you're talking about the water pump or the radiator. Do you know what was leaking, if anything? Objection. Accident answer during the cross. Overruled, the witness may answer. It's redirect. Um, yes, yeah, so water pump, water, coolant, it's all interchangeable um, as far as the cooling system for the engine goes. And the coolant system was low at the time of inspection and had been leaking, but from where, I do not know. And again, does that control the steering? No. The braking? No. The acceleration? No. Finally, sir, you had talked about on uh, cross examination the presence of the high beams being on during the daylight. Do you recall that line of questioning? Yes. Specifically, you had indicated that sometimes the state patrol uses their high beams during the day. What was that for? Objection. That was, yes, sir. Overruled. The witness may answer. It's redirect. To increase visibility. Is that of any assistance if a vehicle is coming up behind people? Objection. Speculative. Based on his training and experience, I will allow him to answer. No. Thank you. Nothing further. All right. Thank you. You may step down. I will take that. Thank you, sir. And um, once the witness passes, I'll excuse the jury for an afternoon break. It's uh, just about 3.06. We'll take about 15 minutes. I'll rise for the jury.
You can be seated. Mr. Brooks, I know the last thing you said, I heard you say it, that's hilarious. What were you referring to? I was referring to, like, are you serious? This, some of the same, some of the same things that I asked on uh, when it's my time to question the witness can be overruled. But when the same thing is done and I object, it's nothing. It's, nothing. it's, just, it's just thrown. It's just thrown to the side. I just, I just think that's funny. Well, I sir, really do. I don't find it funny, number one. Uh, number two, um, you're not in my the, position either. The court rules on the objections at the time that the objections are made. I know, and I wanted to address this briefly. You can have a seat. Um, you had questioned during the testimony of this witness, um, Exhibit 83, um, because I believe what you were saying is, and you can tell me if I'm wrong on this, uh, the copy of the report you have does not have an exhibit sticker on it. It does. Right. And um, the... Which, you want to see it? I, I don't doubt that your copy does not have an exhibit sticker uh, because at the time the report was provided to you, uh, and I'll have the state correct me if I'm wrong on this, uh, it would have been provided uh, through the course of discovery. I'd also note that on April... I believe 22nd of 2022, the state filed a notice of expert naming uh, Inspector uh, Ryan Schultz as an expert witness and indicated it that he would testify consistent with his uh, report. And then I directed your attention to um, the statutes in the rules of evidence dealing with expert testimony, specifically starting at 907.02 through 907.07. Um, that is why I didn't stop during the testimony to have a discussion outside the presence of the jury uh, because at that point um, the objection to not having an exhibit sticker on your report is not um, would not prevent the court from receiving the exhibit once the proper foundation was laid, which in my opinion it was, and the fact that your document didn't have that specific exhibit sticker um, doesn't diminish the fact that um, I know from your cross-examination you were referring to the report. At times you referred to it by page number. It was clear from your questioning that you had reviewed it. I would just note two examples. Uh, you asked some questions regarding visibility and the impact of the high beams. That was one example. And then secondly, uh, questioning him about the ball joint and whether it needed attention and what that would mean. Um, and so that I just it, wanted to make a record That didn't come from the report, Your Honor. The only thing that, that came from the report was from page 9 when I was trying to get clarity about why it said worn tire tie rod. Oh, and you actually questioned and the witness about the uh, different tire and what that would mean. Um, so I thought three uh, good areas of cross-examination uh, that you covered. As far as the other issues I think that you might have when there's redirect, um, I, I'm not going to explain what redirect is, sir, but again, for my position, um, there's direct examination, there's cross-examination. The state or any witness, any party that calls a witness always has the opportunity to ask the direct exam questions and then redirect based upon what's asked during cross-examination. Sometimes that does mean there's some repetition, uh, but I didn't see anything through the redirect of this witness that I thought was in improper. Um, so I just wanted to make a record of that. I you, am going to caution you, sir. Do you understand um, what I was you saying? You are, but you, during multiple times during the questioning of that witness, you were mumbling under your breath. Um, you say disparaging remarks toward the court, toward the witness, or toward the process. So if it was disparaging, what did I say? 
Sir, you I say things like it's not fair or you go you make noises that suggest like you're disgusted with the ruling that is made. So you're assuming what I mean by that and when did Mr. I say Mr. Brooks, I'm fair? just making a record because yeah, but it's you're, important you're making an that incorrect record. It's important that you demonstrate courtesy and decorum through these proceedings and that you give respect to the witnesses who are testifying in the process. Um, did as the you, witness feel disrespected? Did the witness say anything about feeling Mr. disrespected? Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to engage in this I don't think back did. and forth with you because, first of all, it's a mischaracterization of my observations, number one. And yeah, number but your two, observations are job. incorrect. It's if, my if it, job to ensure that the under 906.11 that there's the effective presentation, uh, and I'll just refer you to that once again. I'll read it. Uh, into the record. You don't need to read it. Under 906. Just make sure 11, that you make a correct The judge shall exercise record. reasonable control over the mode and order of interrogating witnesses and presenting evidence to get addressed all every of the time. following. Make the interrogation and presentation effective for the ascertainment of truth. Avoid needless consumption of time. Protect witnesses from harassment or undue embarrassment. It go, sub two talks about the scope of cross examination. Sub three talks about leading questions and when leading questions may be used uh, to develop the witness's testimony. Um, so, with that, we'll take our break. I'll start the 15 minutes. It's 3 13. We are in recess. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I did um, actually take note of um, when the court overruled one of um, Mr. Brooks' objections. His um, response was, stop name, right. trying to be slick. Yeah, I did say that. So, right. just for the record, I thought that that was very disrespectful. Thank you, I would agree. Mm -hmm. Judge, can we discuss scheduling at some point as well, either now or on the well, return? We come back. Why okay. wasn't that addressed uh, right when it happened? Honestly, Mr. Brooks, I'm really trying hard because not to that, highlight that's the, your That's the definition of trying to be slick. During the trial, and trying my best here to I don't frankly see that. minimize pointing I don't see those it. things out to the jury and instead pointing them out it. outside the presence of the jury. You may have noticed I've even started to say I'd remind the jurors that the comments of the parties or the attorneys are not evidence so as to cast a broad brush and not simply highlight your conduct. I haven't noticed anything. And I, um, um, but all right, we're in recess. Thank you. What conduct you're referring to. If you're not, if you're gonna be biased, then somebody. Else. Thank you. Please be seated. We'll go back on the record. <coughs> Do you want to talk scheduling? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, go ahead. Th and thank you for a little extra time here. I spoke with the defendant about his witnesses for tomorrow, and I believe he's. Uh, filling out the paper that I asked him to so we can get his witnesses here. I can tell the court this. I have two crime lab analysts to testify yet this afternoon. They're both here. Once, uh, the next one is from the Milwaukee lab. The second one's from the uh, Madison lab. So if we could complete their testimony today, it would be greatly appreciated. I don't know how late you intend to go today or how long it will take, but I'm being optimistic. Um, our final witness would be a recall of Detective Casey briefly for some uh, follow-up matters, and then we would be in a position to rest. I don't hold out hope that we'll probably be able to rest yet this evening, but maybe, depending on how late you go and how smooth things move along. All right, thank you. I appreciate that information, and um, I appreciate the parties discussing um, off the record some of the issues related to the defense witnesses, so that's great to hear. Um, I'm planned to, I, I can go a little bit later tonight, and I, um, I would say no later than six, um, but if need be, if we can get through those two witnesses and Detective Casey, that would be great. Um, but let's see how we let's see how we go. Okay, thank you. All right, sir. Did uh, you have anything? Yes, I do. Um, Detective Casey already testified. What would be the significance of him testifying again? Well, let's take that up later. I want to deal with the 
lab analysts who are here first and not uh, delay their testimony any further. So other than that issue, I, do you have anything else? Yeah, I, I thought he was released from his subpoena. At least that was my guess. Um, I honestly don't recall whether that question was asked of me. I know he's the court officer and he's been here. Um, I'd have to take a look at the record from when he testified and see if there was any reservation or have the state make an offer of proof and we can go from there, but I'm not going to do that right now. I want to have those lab analysts testify they're here and we can take up more fully the issue with Detective Casey um, after they're done testifying. So how late do we plan on going? I will go as late as 6 o'clock if need be. So I want to keep pushing along. I want to... Yeah, that's definitely pushing it here. That's not that late, sir. We've stayed till 5.36. I mean, Previously, there were times during jury selection we stayed till probably 7 or 7.30. On um, the position, last two nights, we did break at about 4.30, 4, 4.45. And so um, I'm willing to go a little bit later tonight. So it's 3.30 now. Was, we'll see how things go. That, I was making that for the, saying that on the record because in my position, that is kind of late. Well, let's start now and we'll get going and maybe we don't have to go that late. So bring the jury out. Are we going to address subject matter jurisdiction? The written decision that I previously entered is what I will stand on. I'm not going to address it any is that, further. Is that verified proof? Sir, my written decision is the decision on is subject it, matter jurisdiction. Is it verified proof? Because it hasn't been proven on the record and that was not verified proof. It has yet I to am be proven. De denying the request by the defendant to verify subject matter jurisdiction. It has That's denied. Proven for the record. I disagree with you as a matter of law. The show jury's me, coming show out. Me lawful law. All right, for the jury. Show me by lawful law. Unless you make an attack of agreement that you don't have to prove subject matter jurisdiction on the record by law. It should be All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Um, it's about three thirty-seven. I know you're all filing in, so I'll wait till you all get in. Not yet. And welcome back to the rest of you who are filing in after our uh, short afternoon break. I just wanted to let everyone know I um, have let the parties know if need be. Um, I'm willing to stay between 5.30 and 6 this evening. Um, I know there's two witnesses for sure the state intends to call and I intend to get through it's kind of the timing and whether there's a third witness tonight or not um, I'll decide a little bit later uh, but at this point um, the state may call its next witness and the rest of you may be seated of course Thank you, Your Honor. The state calls Chris First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. My name is Chris C H R I S Johnson J O H N S O N. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. How are you employed, sir? I'm employed as the chief of the Office of Crime Scene Response for the Division of Forensic Sciences, Wisconsin State Crime Laboratories. What is your educational background and training, briefly? I have a Bachelor's of Science degree in Molecular Biology from Marquette University. Um, I started my career approximately 16 years ago in the DNA Analysis Unit as a Forensic Scientist. Um, as a Forensic Scientist, I went through an extensive training program to be a, forensic, uh, a DNA Analyst, um, and I've carried many positions since then. And uh, as Chief of the Crime Response Unit, what are your duties and responsibilities? My duties are twofold. I have an administrative aspect and a technical aspect. The administrative aspect is to oversee and monitor all operations or all aspects of the crime scene response program operations. My technical aspects come into play when I receive calls from law enforcement to respond to scenes to provide technical assistance. My primary duty as the technical aspect is to preserve the integrity of the evidence at crime scenes. This is done through proper examination, recognition, documentation, 
and collection of physical items of evidence. Furthermore, another technical aspect I have is to write confidential reports of findings, and this basically summarizes any examinations and processing techniques that are used on scene and is a summary of the findings from those techniques. Lastly, I testify in court when needed. Is there a set procedure you follow when you are asked to respond to a crime scene? Yes. What is that, please? Judge if, leading. <coughs> if law enforcement is at the scene and would like the crime lab crime scene response team to respond, they simply call the lab that's in their jurisdiction and basically the call will get routed to me and I'll dispatch a team to the scene. And on November 21 of 2021, was the crime scene response unit asked to respond to an incident in the city of Waukesha, county of Waukesha, state of Wisconsin? Yes. What was the nature of the call? The nature of the call was to respond to an address on Maple Street to begin processing a vehicle that was abandoned in the driveway of that residence. Were you given any limited information as to the significance of the vehicle? Yes, it was reported to me that the vehicle was most, more than likely involved in uh, running through the Waukesha Christmas Parade. Were you uh, aware that it was reported pedestrians had been struck during the uh, event? Yes, that was reported. Um, the objection is noted. I'll, I'll allow it as it is uh, foundational. The witness may answer. Yes. Now, when I think of a crime scene, I typically think of a place or a location. Does your unit also uh, cover processing of a vehicle like this? Yes. In this Overruled, you may answer. In this particular circumstance or situation, the vehicle itself can be considered a crime scene in and of itself. And in your um, years with the crime lab, do you have prior experience processing motor vehicles that were suspected to have been involved in fatal collisions with pedestrians? Objection, leading. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Yes, I've processed several vehicles related to that. Okay. Did you personally respond to uh, the address at 338 Maple? Yes, I was one of two people responding. Who else responded? Julie Avila. And does Julie work with you? She does. What's her task or uh, primary responsibility? Objection, Lee. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. For this particular scene, I was what is called the team leader, so I'm in charge of all aspects of processing the scene. Julie was a crime scene response photographer, so she was uh, tasked with appropriate documentation via photographs. Okay, so. first on the screen is Exhibit 67, which I believe was previously admitted? Yes. 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 All right. Objection. <coughs> Overruled. Sir, do you recognize the objects uh, depicted in State's Exhibit 67? Yes, this is a overview showing the front end damage of the red Ford Escape that's parked in the driveway of 338 Maple okay. Avenue. Next, we're going to present to you Exhibit 93. What's depicted in 93, please? This is a close-up showing the damage of the front end of the vehicle, the Ford, red Ford Escape that's parked in that driveway. All right. I should have asked you this. Prior to the uh, photographing of the vehicle, is it been moved or altered by you in any way, sir? No. Objection leading. Overruled. Foundational. The witness may answer. No. Please uh, put up for the witness number 68, which has been previously admitted. Go ahead. Objection. Overruled. Please describe, sir. This is, uh, the photograph's taken at an angle, the front passenger side of the vehicle, but again, showing the damage of the front end of the vehicle. Number 102. You recognize that photo, sir? I do. Please describe. This is 
overruled. This is a mid-range photograph of the driver front quarter panel showing a side view of the damage of the hood and the quarter panel. And number 103. Please describe. This is a overall photograph of the back end of the red Ford Escape. Do you believe these five photographs are true and accurate depictions of the way the vehicle looked on the driveway at 338 Maple that evening, sir? Objection, leading. I'm sorry, I was trying to get a hold of my witness list. Could you re-ask the question? Yes, Your Honor. Do these five photographs truly and accurately depict the way the vehicle looked at 338 Maple Street on the evening of November 21, 21? Objection, leading. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Yes. Move to admit 67, well, 67 and 68 are already in. So move to admit 93, 102, 103, and permission to publish all five. Objection. Relevancy. Noted, overruled, the exhibits are received, permission to publish granted, specifically um, 67, 93, 68, 102, 103. I realize some may have been received previously, but to be thorough, I wanted to put that on the record. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Johnson, um, 67 you testified was an overview photograph? Yeah, it's an overall photograph of the... Um, overruled, they're now being shown to the jury. It's proper, it's foundational as well. Go ahead. Yes, this is a overall photograph showing the location uh, of the vehicle, but specifically also showing the front end damage of the vehicle. All right, next 93. Please describe. Uh, a close-up. Over here. Go ahead. A close-up of the damage that has been sustained on the front uh, hood area, bumper area of the Red Forest Escape. Next is 68. Objection. Overruled. Mid-range photograph showing the damage, front end damage, specifically from a reference point of the front passenger corner of the vehicle. I observe on the bottom of that photograph there appears to be some liquid substance on the ground. Do you see that, sir? Yes, I do. Lady. Um, overruled foundational, the witness may answer. Do you remember seeing that substance that night? Yes. Were you able to tell what it was? Objection, respectfully to you. Overruled, based upon his training and experience, he may answer. Not specifically what type of fluid it is, but some kind of engine compartment fluid. From this vehicle? Yes. Okay. Number 102, please. A mid-range of the driver front quarter panel. Um, also showing what I describe as a white headband, headband on the broken driver door mirror. Is that illuminated in some fashion? Just yes. leading. Overrule, the witness may answer. Just a reminder to wait until I fully rule on the objection before you answer. I apologize. Yes. How was it illuminated? Objection leading. Overruled. It has white LEDs that are within the cloth and they're blinking on and off. Okay. And then last would be 103. Objection. Please describe. Oh, I'm sorry, he objected. Um, overruled. Go ahead. An overall from the um, further into the driveway showing the back end, the rear end of the Red Ford Escape. All right. Now, after these uh, photographs were collected on Maple Street, did there come a time where you planned to move the vehicle? Yes. Um, part of the process in arriving at a scene there are three steps. There's a scene approach, scene assessment, and a scene processing strategy. So the scene approach starts with the moment I receive a call. 
and start thinking about what evidence might be present, just knowing the limited facts or the limited information that I have during the call. When I arrive on scene, I do a scene assessment. So I did a walkthrough of this particular vehicle around it and including the property. Determined from that what my processing strategy would be. So going back to answer the question, my thought and my processing strategy this particular night was to collect anything that would be fragile in nature off of the vehicle and then get it transported to a more environmentally friendly uh, secured facility to continue processing in the subsequent days. Was that for your comfort or for some uh, scientific reason? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. The witness may answer. It was very cold that night, so it, w it was difficult to, to process. It was very windy, but it was for a purely scientific standpoint of doing the necessary steps of collecting whatever I needed and I deemed fragile. Collect that stuff and then let's get it into an enclosed trailer and transport to a secure facility that's nearby. So what items, if you uh, recall, did you remove that you had deemed fragile? Objection, Lee. Overruled, the witness may answer. There were first some items that were in the yards or yard of this particular residence, some examination gloves and a winter hat that was in the backyard. So those items were collected. Uh, of particular interest on the vehicle was the headband um, that was around the <laughs> driver door mirror that was broken. So that was important to collect because during transport, that might leave, most likely would have fallen off. So that's what I'm talking about, fragile evidence. Okay. So that item was removed? Correct. Uh, what about the front bumper? We saw that laying on the on the uh, driveway. Was that secured in some fashion? Objection, lady. Overall, you may answer. Yes, to make transport easy, the bumper would have had to be lifted up with bungee cords and resecured. Otherwise, as the tow company is moving the vehicle, the bumper would just continue to go underneath the vehicle, further damaging or maybe even eliminating or getting rid of physical evidence that might be on that bumper. So were you the person that secured that front bumper? I, I was there and I assisted with the tow company. Okay. Where'd you take it? So it was taken from this residence and it was taken to Waukesha County Sheriff's Office secured facility. <clears throat> Is that nearby here in Waukesha? Yes. Okay. Um, ask Madam Clerk if you could turn off the display, please, and I'm going to uh, present to the witness only another series of photographs, starting with 105. Go ahead. Do you know how many? Eight. Sequential? Uh, yes, 105 through 112. Thank you. Objection. Well, I haven't seen them yet, so I'll have to wait, but you can put them up and then I'll make a ruling. I think we're ready on our end. We're just waiting for Madam Clark. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. <laughs> I'll leave it alone. You hit it. We <laughs> just mixed each other twice. Five. One oh five. All right. Um, Given what I see on the screen, the objection is overruled. Okay. And, Your Honor, for the sake of time, I'm just going to ask the witness to look through these photos just as if he had them in front of him, and then I'll um, ask some foundational questions. So, 105 is on the screen. Do you see it, sir? Yes. Do you need more time to review that photo? No. 106, please. Yes. Do you need more time to review that photo? Objection no. leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. 107? Yes. Do you need more time? No. 108? Yes. Do you need more time? No. 109? 
Yes. Need more time? No. One ten. Yes, I recognize, and I don't need more time. One eleven. I recognize, and I don't need more time. And one twelve. I recognize that photo and don't need any more time. Where were each of these photos taken? Each of these photos were taken at that secure facility that where Waukesha County Sheriff's Office, their secure facility. This is indoors at that facility. Okay. And do you believe each of these photos is a true and accurate representation of what the vehicle looked like once you towed it to the secure facility? Yes. <clears throat> a move for admission of 105 through 112 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Jack Shea. <coughs> Noted. Exhibits 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, and 112 are all received permission to publish granted as to all. So in this photograph, sir, is the, uh, what's the condition of the front bumper, please? The Overruled foundational the witness may answer the front bumper is secured in somewhat should be its original position with those bungee cords that we previously talked about okay <clears throat> next 106 please please describe overall photograph uh, the <clears throat> front driver's quarter panel, including um, showing the hood damage. Was there an effort by you to try and match the pieces of the bumper to the frame of the body, or is that just the way it came together? Objection. Speg with you. Go ahead, you may answer. At this time, I was not trying to physically match anything together. It was just for the purpose of securing it for transport. Okay. What is the uh, position of the driver's side window in this photograph, sir? The window is down. Is that the way you found it? Yes. Objection. Okay. Overruled. The witness may answer. He responded to the scene where the vehicle was located and can testify based upon his knowledge. 107, please. Please describe. An overall photograph from the point view of the front passenger side of the vehicle. Next, 108. Objection. Overrule. Please describe. An overview of the front of the vehicle, including the front passenger quarter panel and the front passenger door. What position was the front passenger window in? Down. Is that the way you found it? Yes. Okay. 109, please describe. An overall photograph of the passenger side of the vehicle. Um, including, including in this photograph is the front quarter panel, the front passenger door, and the rear passenger door. And. Uh, Along the, the front passenger door and the rear passenger door, do you see anything remarkable? Objection, leading. Overruled. Uh, spanning the length of both doors is uh, quite a significant scratch. Have you seen scratches like that before in processing motor vehicles, sir? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. I have. What is that consistent with, please? Objection, leading. Overruled. Coming into contact with another item. Thank you. Uh, number 110. Please describe. An overall, overall photograph showing the rear of the passenger side of the vehicle. Spe specifically noting that the rear passenger window um, that window is not down, it was actually shattered, okay. broken, um, and also showing in this photograph are two apparent fire bullet defects. 
Okay, I have some other photos uh, more specific to that in a minute. Um, thank you. 111. <coughs> Objection. Overruled. Please describe. An overall photograph from the vantage point of the rear passenger side of the vehicle. And then 112, please. Objection. Overruled. An overall of the vehicle from vantage point, rear driver side of the vehicle. Is the rear driver side window, what position is it in, please? That is up. And is that the way you found it? Yes. And it looks like there's a substance on the exterior of the vehicle on the driver's side. Do you see what I'm referring to, sir? Objection leading. Um, overall, the witness may answer. Yes, I do. Do you know what that item or substance was? Objection speculative. to you. Overruled, based upon his training and experience and his personal observation of the vehicle, he may answer. Not knowing what specific fluid that might be, I did do a presumptive test to see if it's possibly blood. Okay. All tests that I did of that liquid that's on the driver's side came back negative for okay. the possible presence of blood. And was it um, <clears throat> sprayed along the most of the driver's side of the vehicle? Objection speculative. Overruled. Yes. Okay. Now, I'd like to um, move on, sir, and ask you, did you do a interior inspection of the vehicle? Yes. And an exterior inspection of the vehicle? Correct. I'd like to um, highlight some specific areas, um, starting with the interior of the vehicle. Would you have processed the entire uh, passenger compartment and cargo space of this vehicle? Yes. And what types of things would you have been looking for, sir? Based on my former experience, uh, looking for surface types that might contain potential DNA evidence. So specifically, anything that's in the vehicle that would have been handled uh, to control the vehicle or handled in a repetitive manner or with some kind of force. So for example, the steering wheel, the gear shifter, those items were swabbed by myself for the potential of DNA. We also looked at surfaces within the vehicle and processed those for the possible presence of latent fingerprints. Do you remember uh, locating an object on the front passenger seat of the vehicle? Yes. I'm going to ask that uh, we display to the witness only Exhibit 117. Do you recognize what's shown in Exhibit 117, sir? Yes, there's a hat that's on the front passenger seat cushion. Is that the way the object looked when you found it? Yes. Move to admit 117 permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Exhibit 117 is received permission to publish, granted. Could you please, uh, it's a touch screen in front of you, circle the hat that you just described for the jury. And then uh, to your left, sir, on the witness stand, before you uh, took the stand, I placed an item up there that's been marked as exhibit number 87. You see that on the table there? Yes. Can you identify exhibit 87? Yes, this is the winter style hat that I collected from that front passenger seat. Okay. I'd like to uh, show another photograph to the witness exhibit 118, please. Objection. Overruled, go ahead. Do you recognize the object in exhibit 118? 
I do. Do you believe this photo is a true and accurate representation of the object as you uh, found it on the vehicle? I do. Objection. Overruled. Um, your answer may stand again. Just wait until I rule on the objection, please. Move to admit 118, permission to publish. <laughs> Exhibit 118 is received, permission to publish granted. Please describe. This is a close up photograph of the clothing items that were pinned to the windshield <coughs> by the crumpled hood and it was being held in place by that hood being pinning the items against the windshield as well as that wiper arm. Okay. Did you eventually remove these items? Yes. What did you find them to be? It was a detachable hood from a jacket as well as a winter hat. And can you just point out on the touch screen which is which? Objection leading. Overruled. That's the hood portion, and that's the, the hat portion. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Did you find any U.S. mail or paperwork inside the vehicle? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, I did. Were there any names associated with the U.S. mail or paperwork inside the vehicle? Objection. <coughs> Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. What was that name? Daryl E. Brooks, Jr. Was there an address, if you can recall? Objection. Overruled. The witness may answer. There was, but I can't, I don't exactly recall it. Sure. Also on the table next to you, sir, is your report that I've marked as exhibit number 90. Do you see that? Yes. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Placed on the table. Go ahead, attorney offer. Well, objection. How did it get on the table? Um, your objections noted. It's overruled. Um, <coughs> the record will reflect that um, there's a copy of a crime lab report. It has an exhibit sticker, number 90, with the case number of this case. Um, handing it back to the witness. Go ahead and make questions. How did it get it. on the table? Who put, placed it on the table? That's, Attorney that's Opera indicated picture. she placed it there. When did that happen? Attorney Opera, go ahead and continue. Did you author this report, sir? Yes, I did. If you uh, review the report, would you be able to see the address for uh, Daryl Brooks that was noted in the paperwork from the inside of the SUV? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Uh, my name is Daryl Brooks, Jr. Please no, do. Overruled. Yes, I would. Please do that, sir. Objection. Overruled. Grounds for the overrule. The witness may answer. Grounds for the overrule. Go ahead, sir. The address for the pieces of mail that I recovered was 4014 North 19th Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53209. Thank you. Objection. That should be striked. He, when he asked the question, he said he didn't recall. So how can you force somebody to recall? Oh. The witness is Recollection was refreshed through the use of his report, which he indicated he documented the address. Your objections noted it's overruled. The answer will stand. Go ahead, next question, please. Yes, and actually, if I could back up one minute and ask Ms. Gussie to put back up 117. I have to ask a question about 117. Go ahead. And if we could display well, it, please, Madam Clerk. <coughs> Got no Mr. Brooks, please refrain from interrupting. You'll have an opportunity to ask I, I your questions. I have an objection of how, evident, how stuff got to the table without my knowledge. That that should be known. That should at least be noted for the record. It was. I noted wouldn't be. For I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, your objections noted. It's overruled. Go ahead, Attorney Hopper. Mm -hmm. So that needs to stop in, happening. In it needs addition to, to the hat. All right. I'm going to excuse the jury.
can't keep doing stuff with, without it should be a fair trial that's my right I shouldn't be able to do things without my knowledge and then pass it off to the jury like that's fair they deserve to know that too As soon as the jury's out, I'll make a record. All right, Mr. Brooks, you are well aware that the reason documents that are name. being put on the I don't consent to being called that name. Uh, my name is Daryl Brooks, Jr. Because this court indicated it would limit the movement of the parties due to your custodial status to keep things fair. And I merely asked how did it get there? Sir, do not I'm interrupt not me or I'm you will forfeit your rights to, to be present know how it got there? in this courtroom. So you're holding me in contempt? Me. Are you holding me in contempt? I'm going to make a record. Are you holding me in contempt? I'm not answering your questions. So then you're not holding me in contempt? Do not interrupt me again or you will go to the other courtroom. Under what lawful law? All right, he's interrupted me once again. Um, we're going to clear the courtroom. He's being disrespectful. I'll make a record once he moves. Unless you can promise me right now that you let me make my record without you interrupting me, sir. You going to make your record? You can make your record. Then please don't interrupt me. Don't hold me in contempt. I've never said any such thing. Removing me for the courtroom, Your Honor, is essentially holding me in contempt. All right. No, you're forfeiting your right to be present under Illinois versus Allen. I didn't forfeit anything. I will, I'm going to start talking, and if he interrupts, then I will close this courtroom, and he will be taken to the next courtroom. Mr. Brooks, you are well aware that the court made some pretrial uh, rulings related to whether there would be – they can stay in. I haven't closed it yet. He's not interrupting me. Whether the parties could approach the witness stand. And I did that because you're in custody and I'm not going to allow you to approach the witness stand while in custody. Um, that is why uh, various precautions have taken place uh, to limit, frankly, that from happening. Um, throughout this trial, um, there was one instance at the very beginning of the case where I allowed the state to approach a witness. I corrected that. That hasn't happened since. We've had Bailiffs take items up to the witness stand, or the items have been given to the witnesses, or they've been placed on the witness stand. That's proper. There is nothing uh, wrong about that. Nobody's trying to pull a fast one over you. No one is doing something that's not permitted uh, by this court, or frankly, under the rules of decorum and courtesy, or the presentation of evidence in this case. Frankly, from my perspective, sir, your attempts and your comments are to try to dig in at this jury and to somehow create doubt about the presentation of this case or the fairness of these proceedings uh, without the party, meaning the state, having an opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. I've taken the jury out at this point to admonish you that any further mumbling under your breath um, or not recognizing when I uphold or sustain an objection that I will take as a disrupting interruption meant to disrupt the proceedings. I'm not holding you in contempt. I'm well aware that that's one of my options. I choose not to do it for the reasons that I've stated on the record previously. All right, you can forfeit your right to be present at any point in time during this trial by your conduct under Illinois versus Allen. When it is disruptive, when it uh, does not follow the simple rules of courtesy and decorum, I draw your attention once again to SCR chapter 62, um, which has been previously provided to you, which is under the statute there. Um, these constant mumbling and interruptions for the during the proceedings i haven't made a record of them today but i will now started at 901 then there was five at 902 three at 903 four at 904 one at 905 sorry two at 905 one at 906 uh three at 908 again at 917 927 1031 105 there was talking over by you at 203 
five interruptions at 214, 215, 217, at 219, um, audible muttering, 231, 233, what I would describe as inappropriate, like muttering under your breath, 235, at 306, there was a hilarious comment. At 311, there was what I would describe as arguing about the muttering and the irony of it all. At 312, there were four interruptions. At 337, um, more 409, 410, more mumbling. At 411, twice. And at 412, um, nine very, uh, different times. So I think I've made an ample record of the disruptions today. I've been abundantly patient with you. Um, I've, again, as I stated earlier, I've even limited how I tell these things to the jury about how to disregard, and I simply say the jury is to disregard comments and statements made by the parties or the lawyers as those are not evidence. So I'm warning you, do not interrupt again when if this jury comes back or when they come back and you do that, uh, then uh, you will be removed and you will forfeit your right to be present for the examination of this witness. Let's bring the jury back in. Well, well you might as well remove me then because you, what you're doing is, is, is not fair. I can't even rebut what you're saying. I didn't interrupt you. I let you make your incorrect record. Mr. Brooks, I'm bringing the jury out and we're continuing. We're going to get through these witnesses. Okay? And I'm not stopping you through from doing that. Through your behavior, you're not going to delay these you, proceedings it, today. I'm not trying to delay continue. the proceedings, so I wish you would stop being incorrect on the record and saying what I'm trying to do if you don't know that. You don't Mr. know Brooks, what I'm, I'm trying to do. I'm bringing the jury out. I'm not going to argue with you. Then, so. then don't. Because I'm not arguing with you either. I'm stating facts. You're raising your voice. It's because very Because I'm, I'm, I'm tired of you always making a record. At me. You're making a record of me trying to look bad. I know what you're trying to do. It's not going to work. No, I'm making a record of what's accurately You're being making done a record of incorrect statements. That's what you're doing. You're not making a record of Mr. not Bros, being I'm able. I'm advising you to be quiet because the jury's coming back you're out. You're advising me to be quiet? Is you telling I'm me to be quiet? I'm advising you to be respectful when the jury Are you comes telling out. me to be quiet or are you asking me? I'm asking you and advising okay. you. Okay, thank you for correcting that because don't nobody tell me what to do. I don't tell nobody else what to do. I'd appreciate we're all you. We're all adults in here. I've never told you to sir. do anything at all. Lord, sir, I'd appreciate if your tone of voice would change. I, I would appreciate if you would ask me. I'm a grown man with grown kids. Don't nobody, ain't nobody going to talk to me like that. Nobody. I don't have a problem with doing what you ask me to do, not tell me. Just like when I ask you about subject matter jurisdiction that you have yet to prove on the record. But somehow I'm being intentionally disruptive. Of, uh, come on, man. Stop. Just stop it. Jury's right. coming out. All right for the jury. Not going to work. I'm supposed to be scared of getting removed or something. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Statement continue its examination of this witness. I believe we're on Exhibit 117. Yes, we have 117. Madam Clerk, would you please turn the display back on? <coughs> Mr. Johnson, were there other items on the front passenger seat besides the blue winter hat? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. I do recall a cell phone being present on that front passenger seat. Do you remember what kind of cell phone? An iPhone. I also see uh, some items that look like maybe headphones or uh, charging cables, something like that. Do you see that, Objection sir? leading. Overruled, foundational. The witness may answer. The exhibits previously been <coughs> Objection speculative. Overruled. I do see that. Do you remember something like that on the front passenger seat? Yes. Okay. And how about on the floorboard of the front passenger seat? Is there an item there, sir? 
objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. What do you remember that item was? A TV. Okay. And to the left of the TV, the white colored object? I don't recall what that is. Okay. But this is the exact way the passenger seat looked when you recovered the vehicle, correct? That's correct. Okay. Now if we could please go to Exhibit 116 and put up for the witness only. Sir, do you see Exhibit 116 in front of you? I do. Do you recognize this photograph? I do. Do you believe this to be a true and accurate depiction of the interior of the SUV? Yes. Move to admit 116, permission to publish. Objection. Relevancy. Overrule Exhibit 117, excuse me, Exhibit 116 is received, permission to publish is granted. What's in the uh, photo of 116, please? This is an overview of the rear passenger seat. Um, that rear passenger compartment contained several clothing items and miscellaneous items. Okay. And uh, was the um, condition of the back seat like this when you found the vehicle, sir? Objection, speculative. Overruled the witness <coughs> the answer based upon his knowledge of recovering the vehicle from the scene and his training and experience. Yes. Now for the witness only, I'm going to please ask uh, Ms. Gussie to put up 113, 114, and 115 for his review. Go ahead. 113 up? Yes. Okay. Do you recognize that item? I do. Okay. Next, 114. Do you recognize 114? Yes. And 115, do you recognize 115? There it is. I do. Okay. Do you believe these three uh, photographs truly and accurately depict uh, the vehicle, these areas of the vehicle, sir? Yes. Uh, move to admit 113, 114, and 115, permission to publish. <coughs> Exhibits 113, 114, and 115 are all received, permission to publish, granted. Please. Oh. Jerry would let me know when the jury box monitors are on. All right, thank you very much. All right, please describe 113, sir. That is an apparent fire bullet defect that's in the windshield of the Ford Escape. Is that the rear view mirror on the left side of the picture? Yes, this photograph would be from the inside looking through the windshield. Were you able to tell the path of travel for the bullet? Yes. yes. Speculative. Please describe. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. The, the fire bullet that caused this defect most likely was came through that rear passenger window that was shattered and entered the vehicle and then exited the vehicle through the windshield. So that's a ex exit damage that we're seeing there. Yes. How can you be sure? Windshields have laminated, laminated glass, and so the directionality of a fire bullet going through laminate glass, there's an indicative laminate tag, we call it. So that shows the direction of the fire bullet. Okay. Number 114, please. Please describe. That's an apparent fired bullet defect. I call this a striking defect. That's on the roof rail of the passenger side of the vehicle. Okay. Why do you call it a striking defect? It didn't penetrate any part of the vehicle. It was a more of a glancing kind of ricochet. Okay. And then uh, number 115. And if you could zoom in on that uh, back left. Yep, thank you. <coughs> Please describe. This is a, a, an apparent fire bullet defect. I call this a perforating defect because it actually went through the exterior door skin and went all the way through into the inside of the vehicle. Did you ever find the, uh, the fired round in the vehicle? 
Yes, I did recover a fire bullet and fire bullet fragment from the rear cargo area of the vehicle. Okay. Was there any evidence that that bullet traveled any further than the cargo area of the SUV? Objection, speculative. Overruled, based upon the witness's training and experience and examination of the vehicle, he may answer. No, the bullet stayed in that rear cargo area. Okay. Now, aside from um, examining the interior and the exterior of the vehicle at ground level, did you attempt to look underneath the vehicle? Yes, the first processing strategy, if we go back to that, I wanted to get everything collected from all sides of the vehicle and inside of the vehicle before putting it on a vehicle lift to examine the undercarriage of the vehicle. So you did do that? Yes. What kinds of things are you looking for on the undercarriage? Looking for anything that shouldn't be normally present on the undercarriage of the vehicle. So I was looking for any hairs, fibers, any potential biological fluids such as blood. Did you find any such objects? Objection leading. Overall, he may answer. Yes, I did. Did you collect those items? Yes, I did. You had described for us earlier um, swabbing of the steering wheel on the interior of the vehicle. Do you recall that? Objection. Yes. Leading. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. How do you go about swabbing a steering wheel, sir? Objection. What's the relevancy? Overruled. The witness may answer. The best way to collect DNA evidence from a surface is to use a two-swab technique. We'll, the first swab is a swab that's slightly moistened with uh, deionized water and basically swabbing the surface and then following up that swab with a dry swab. So it's a two swab process, a wet swab followed by a dry swab and that becomes one item of evidence. Same thing for the gear shift? Yes. What do you do with these swabs after you collect them? I put them into the appropriate container um, and then seal that container, write my description of that particular item of evidence, and eventually that evidence is transferred to a unit at the crime laboratory for analysis. In this particular case, those items, anything for DNA, is going to be transferred to, to the DNA analysis unit. Did that happen? Yes, that did. And how about the uh, hat? States Exhibit 87, uh, did that get transferred to another unit for further analysis, to your knowledge? Yes, yeah, so any clothing item that's Hold on. There was an objection. Oh. Grounds? Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may continue answering. Clothing items that are worn by individuals are a really good source of transfer of DNA, so yes. I collected that hat and it was transferred to the DNA analysis unit. Uh, your report exhibit 90, did you believe that to be uh, a true and accurate narration or summary, I should say, of your work in this case, sir? Yes, I do. Okay. Move to admit number 90, your honor. <clears throat> Objection, relevancy. Overruled exhibit 90 is received. I don't have any other questions then, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Cross exam, please. You said you do DNA uh, analysis, correct? No, I, I did DNA analysis for nearly 10 years. I don't actually do DNA analysis anymore. So at the time of the incident, were you doing DNA analysis? No. So who did the DNA analysis on all the items that were found during your investigation? DNA analyst Trevor Nailit. Did you see the, the results of those DNA anal Did you see the results of those DNA tests? We did have conversations. Did you see him? No. So it would be fair to say you don't know what those results were? 
I didn't verify it. Like I said, we just had conversations. So do you know the results of the DNA analysis? In particular, is there a particular item? For any of the items. I don't recall the exact results, no. And you made reference to the uh, the gunshot that that you stated stayed in the rear cargo. Uh, where in the rear cargo did you find that shell casing? Objection, that's a misstatement. It wasn't a shell casing, Your Honor. Shell casing, fragment, same thing. Hold on, there's been an objection. I'll sustain the objection. It mischaracterizes the testimony and ask that you rephrase it. Did you find a shell casing, a bullet fragment? I found a fire bullet fragment. Where did you find the fire bullet fragment? It was really close proximity to where the rear latch comes down and hooks in to stay closed. So on the floor of the rear cargo by where the actual cargo door comes down. And you said a latch that comes down? Yeah, so how doors latch, like car doors latch, you know where the latch is? So where the rear cargo door came down and latched, it was in really close proximity on the horizontal surface of that rear cargo area. Did you observe uh, if, if the bullet fragment had struck anything? It struck some items in that rear cargo area. Do you recall what, what it struck? I don't. You made reference to a headband being on the, uh, the rear view driver's side mirror, correct? Correct, it was on the driver's door mirror. And from your expertise, how would you, in your opinion, guess that it got there? By coming into contact with something or someone that was wearing it. And do you know that for sure? No, but based off of my experience of a lot of years of examination of physical items of evidence. But it'd be fair to say that you don't know exactly. No, I wasn't at the parade. I wasn't. No. And you stated that you were present for the towing of the vehicle, correct? Yes. Do you recall at any time anyone uh, attempting to start the vehicle? No. And you stated that the bumper was, I guess, moved at some point so it wouldn't drag under the vehicle. I'm, I'm guessing that's what you said. If I'm wrong, you can. No, that's correct. Yeah, we, we used bungee cords to secure it off the ground so that when we're moving it or putting it on the flatbed to go to, to the actual enclosed trailer, that it wouldn't be constantly going underneath the vehicle. When towing the vehicle, what was it placed on? Because of the amount of traffic or cars that were parked on the road, we couldn't, the towing company couldn't get the enclosed trailer right to the end of the driveway. So the vehicle was put onto a flatbed truck and then driven a few houses down where then it was transferred to an enclosed trailer and then removed from the scene. So with the bumper being that it was first placed on a flatbed truck, as you say, at that time with the bumper had, what, what, what problem with the bumper had caused if it wasn't going to be physically dragged or, or anything at that point? I'm not sure I understand your question. What, what kind of problem with the bumper pose if the vehicle was on a, on a flatbed truck? The whole point essentially, is... Essentially what I'm saying is to give you more clarity, how could the bumper be dragged at that point? It was being removed from the surface of the driveway onto the flatbed. 
So if the bumper weren't secured in an upright position, it would be pulled and the bumper, as the vehicle is going this way, the bumper would be pulled underneath the vehicle. So once it was secured on the flatbed truck, would the bumper still pose any problem? The, the vehicle on the flatbed, the bumper was in a secured position. If it wasn't bungee corded, would it have posed a problem? Yes. How so if it wasn't moving? The whole purpose was to secure the bumper in place to preserve any physical evidence that might have been on the bumper. And you, do you recall who did the actual towing? The company is complete towing and recovery. And you stated to want to get the vehicle to a envir environmentally friendly, secure location? Yeah, a better term would be environmentally controlled. Uh, what, what do you mean by environmentally controlled? Proper lighting uh, outside of the elements, outside of view of the public, so an enclosed building. Why the reference to outside of the public? It's easier to do examinations in a controlled environment. Would it be fair to say at that time, before it was told, the, the, the vehicle had been uh, secured, uh, checked, that was, done, that was done out in public, so what would be the difference at that point? I'm going to go back to my original statement of what my primary duty is. My primary duty is to preserve the integrity of the evidence. So that night, I was concerned with doing the necessary steps that I deemed relevant to collect and then get that vehicle to a more suitable environment just based off of how much more work and analysis and processing that vehicle would entail. Fundamentally, I follow... Uh I follow what you're saying fundamentally. The question though is, by the time you arrived to the scene where the vehicle was located, were you aware that the vehicle had essentially been already investigated? No. So you had no knowledge that the vehicle had been secured, had been uh, pretty much investigated by that point? Well, I was aware that the vehicle was in a secured state. I don't know what happened prior to that. It was very little information that I received on the initial phone call because of the hectic nature of everything. So I had an address and I knew that the vehicle was being secured by law enforcement. So law enforcement were present when you arrived to the scene? Yes. And at that time you had learned, no, uh, did you learn any knowledge from the law enforcement other than what you were told during phone call no do you recall who you were called by I was called by special agent in charge Dave Clubundy of the Division of Criminal Investigations <laughs> do you recall what time you arrived at the scene I arrived at approximately 8 15 p.m. do you recall what time the vehicle was found I don't recall. Do you recall anyone telling you or mention, mentioning what time the vehicle had been found? I don't recall. So it would be fair to say before you arrived on the scene, you have no knowledge of what's been happening around the vehicle? That's correct. You say you you made reference to a hat being found in the background. Do you, do you remember saying that? Or in the backyard, rather. I'm sorry. Not the background. The backyard, I meant to say. Yes. And at the time that you observed this hat in the backyard, do you, from your expert opinion, do you recall that? having any relevance to the vehicle? 
No, it, it was um, an item of evidence or an I a potential item of evidence that just seemed out of place. So in that, those types of situations, I always collect those types of items. But you weren't sure at the time <laughs> if it had any involvement with the actual vehicle? No. Was there anything significant that stood out about the hat? Just the location. Did you find any blood on the hat? Did you find, or is it just pretty much just a hat in the backyard? I didn't do a thorough, thorough examination of the hat. So as far as you, you were concerned, you, you, it was basically just taking in the evidence as a precautionary thing or? Yeah, it was an item that just seemed out of place. So I collected that hat. Did you at any time obtain knowledge about the relevancy of that? No. All the uh, photographs that you were shown, had you seen those photographs before today? Yes. Do you recall if they were taken the same night of your investigation or multiple nights or days, rather? There were multiple days. And do you recall why you had to, or do you recall why those photos had to be taken over a multiple day span? Yes, the vehicle needed a comprehensive evaluation or processing examination of pretty much every single side and surface of that vehicle. And to do that uh, photograph wise would have took days? Yes. So when did you start, uh, when did you start actually uh, doing an investigation of the items inside of the vehicle? That would have been the 22nd, November 22nd. So the next, the next day? Correct. And so did you yourself do uh, analysts of the outside of the vehicle? Yes. Same day, 22nd of November? Yes. So you kind of started the outside and the inside pretty much roughly at the same time? Yes. Do you recall how long you, uh, your complete investigation took? Mine along with my colleagues? Yours. Mine. The examination itself of just me examining the vehicle? Just you. Probably over 40 hours. And that does not include the report that I'm writing. It doesn't include the process of going through the report, everything. But my examination, at least 40. And so I'm assuming you did the report after you completed the initial investigation part. Yes, the report's a summary of my processing. And define summary. What do you mean by summary? It pulls everything together. It details my examinations and any findings I have from those examinations. I always view summary as not every detail, but pretty much like Uh, it's, it's, it's much as would be relevant, but not every single detail. Would that be fair to say? This report is comprehensive in the terms of it lists every single item that was collected. So why would you refer to it as a summary? It's a summary of the examination and processing. That's the best way to describe it. It's not a dictation. In other words, what do you mean by there, dictation? There are other reports that other agencies may do that are dictated, right? They're this, I did this, then I did this, then I did this. This is a summary. This isn't a dictated report. So what exactly did you summarize in your report? My examination and processing strategies that I used and the items of evidence collected and any relevant findings 
associated with those <laughs> examinations. Did you do any examination of the cell phones? No, I collected those and transferred those to a detective with the Waukesha Police Department. Do you recall who that detective was? David, his last name is spelt, I believe, F-O-Y-E-N, Foyen. So at the time that you turned the phone phones over, did you do any do any more work in regards to the phones? No. Do you recall doing any uh, investigation on the airbag control module? I didn't. No, I don't do that. Do you recall obtaining a search warrant to conduct an inspection on the uh, ACM? I'm sorry, no. I didn't understand you. An inspection of what? Uh, the, the ACM, I guess that would be the air control module, I'm guessing that's what that's Thank you. Re referencing. No, since I don't do that type of analysis or examination, I didn't obtain any search warrant with that. Any reason why I would say that in the paperwork? Objection vague. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. <clears throat> as to what paper your paperwork you're referring to. Uh I'm guessing I don't know what the what it will be called, but it says conclusion inspection summary. And, and the conclusion inspection, inspection or conclusion slash inspection summary. Do you recall? Is it from this witness? Huh? Is it from this witness? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't think that is from this witness, John. I don't see anything like that in this Exhibit 90. Are you perhaps still looking at Inspector Schultz's report from the State Patrol, the last witness? Uh, what page number do you have? And I'll take a look at it and I'll compare. This says uh, page five. Yeah, he's looking at uh, the last exhibit from Inspector Schultz, 83. Well, it says Chief Christopher Johnson. Oh, it does say that in 83. Yeah, it says, if I can read for completeness, or you can, it says, Upon arrival, I met with crime scene chief Christopher Johnson from the Wisconsin State Crime No, Lab. no, no, no. That's not what I'm reading from. Okay. Chief Johnson had obtained a search warrant to conduct the mechanical inspection and to image the data retained within the escape's airbag control module ACM. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. So that was written by Inspector Schultz, who just testified, not this witness. To clarify the record here. Thank you. Yes. I apologize for that. It's all in the same paperwork with uh, Chief Johnson, so I, maybe that's where the confusion comes in. The record would reflect this witness. His last name is Johnson, so I think that's understandable. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know. I was just reading what I have here. Fair enough. Keep going. Do you recall at any time obtaining any type of search warrants pertaining to the vehicle in this incident? Yes, I have obtained a copy of the search warrant. And do you remember what that uh, search warrant was was for? What, what was the intended search? Uh, to search the vehicle and process it for any biological fluids, hairs, fibers, any electronic equipment, any personally identifying information. 
the 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 ACM would would fall under the lines of uh, the mechanical side of yes. At any time during your inspection, did you observe anyone try to start the, the vehicle? When I was with investigator Schultz, when he came to my laboratory, he attempted to start it. And after... Uh you, you already st stated that your initial part of your investigation before before the report uh, totaled 40 hours. And at that time, after you had completed your report, did you do any more investigating in regards to the vehicle? After my report was complete? Yeah, after, after you had done uh, the 40 hours uh, that you stated with and then the actual report. No. Once my report's done, I didn't do any further examination of the vehicle. And after that was completed, had you uh, received any follow-up from law enforcement at, after you had completed everything? No. Had you yourself uh, followed up with law enforcement ab about the investigation after you completed your initial part? No. You yourself didn't file any claims in this matter, did you? No. Do you know of anyone who filed any claims in this matter? I don't. And Do you recall who you were subpoenaed by to testify? I was subpoenaed by District Attorney Sue Opper. Do you recall when that was? I believe it was sometime. I don't exactly recall when. And did you did you follow up on that subpoena? No. After you had received it. Have you at any time seen or read any complaints in, in regards to this incident? No. Do you know who the plaintiff is in this matter? The state of Wisconsin. Would you label that as a person, an actual human? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. Not relevant. Mm -hmm. You ever actually seen the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. If you saw the plaintiff, would you be able to identify the plaintiff? Objection. Grounds? Irrelevant. Sustained. Pursuant to 9611, <coughs> sir, please move on to a different line of questioning. Just trying to establish who the plaintiff is, Your Honor. Do you see the plaintiff present in court today? Objection, Grounds. irrelevant. Sustained. Would you consider yourself to be an injured party in this matter? No. No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Uh, just very briefly. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you said when you arrived on Maple Street there were police officers present? That's correct. And you said the vehicle was secure at that point? Correct. Objection. What do you mean? Leading. Um, the answer may stand. Next question. Overall. 
What do you mean by that, sir? The perimeter was secured with crime scene tape, and there were officers that were standing at the location where the vehicle was. Was it, would it have been possible for a member of the public or any curious person to just walk up and touch the vehicle or do anything to the vehicle? Objection. Speculative. Uh, based upon his training and experience, he may answer. Overruled. <coughs> they would have been stopped by law enforcement. Thank you. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. <coughs> While he's stepping down, if my jurors and anyone else in the courtroom want to stand, I do want to get through one more witness tonight. <coughs> and, and then uh, the exhibits that Mr. Johnson has, Your Honor, what would you like done with those? Uh, I'll take them. All right. Uh, I have 90 and 87. Yes. <gasps> what was 87? 87 is a hat. I'm not sure yeah. if I did move that, but I would move that into evidence. So we will need that item for the next witness. Okay. okay. I'll put that back. Uh, um objection to that that um, no, before you should before you showed me that I didn't even see what that was if you would have never told I know but if you never would have told me I never would have even know what that was and I didn't see it till you just moved it the witness had it up on the stand but here it is it's exhibit Marcus exhibit 87 go ahead and say state has moved it into evidence I believe there's an objection it's yes noted. there is an objection um, overruled based upon the testimony of the prior witness. It is received. And who do we have coming up to the stand? Your Honor, the state next calls Trevor Nalid. And for the record, he was handed a copy of Exhibit 91 on his way to the witness stand. <coughs> My name is Trevor Nalid, T R E V O R N A L E I D. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. And I'm sorry for mispronouncing your name. Uh, sir, where do you work? Uh, I am employed by the Wisconsin Department of Justice at the State Crime Laboratory in Madison. And what is your position there? I'm a senior forensic, senior forensic scientist in the DNA analysis unit. Um, how many forensic DNA cases have you worked? Uh, just over 500. And about how many DNA samples have you processed? Over 2,000. Overruled, the witness may answer. I'm sorry, will you repeat your answer? Over 2,000. Have you previously testified in court before? Objection, relevancy. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. As a reminder, uh, there may be objections. Please <coughs> wait until I rule on those objections until you answer. Go ahead, you may answer. Thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, ask you a little bit further about DNA analysis and how that works, okay? Sure. Um, what is DNA? We hear a lot about it. What is it? DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Uh, it's essentially the genetic blueprint that makes us what we are. Uh, it codes for us to have two legs, two arms, hair color, eye color, etc. And where's DNA found in the human body? Injection of eating. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. DNA is found in the nucleus of a cell. Is it the same in every cell throughout the body? In every cell that has a nucleus, yes, such as uh, white blood cells and skin cells. And is that important in your analysis? Objection it, leading. Overruled, foundational, you may answer. Yes, it is. Why? Objection um, leading. Overruled, go ahead. It's important because we can take samples, evidentiary samples that may be from blood or saliva and compare them with uh, known standards, which are typically buccal swabs, which are uh, swabs from the inside of the cheek, or dried blood standards in the case. Does each individual have unique DNA? Everybody except identical twins is unique. Okay. Are you familiar with uh, something known as STR analysis? Objection leading. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Yes, I am. What is STR analysis, please? STR stands for short tandem repeat analysis. Um, over 99% of DNA is the same from person to person. So we're looking at that 1% uh, 
that varies from individual to individual. Um, short tandem repeats are very small sequences of DNA that repeat over and over. So at one location, I may have 12 of these repeats where another individual may have 14. Is that distinction important? Yes. Why? Um, we can type standards from anybody associated with the case and make comparisons from the evidentiary profile to the standards to either include or exclude <coughs> individuals. All right. Um, I'd like to direct your attention to Exhibit 91. Do you have that item in front of you, sir? Yes, I do. What is 91, please? Uh, 91 is my confidential report of laboratory findings dated April 29th, 2022. And uh, do you know um, if it relates to events occurring in the city of Waukesha <coughs> on November 21 of 21? Objection leading. Overruled foundational, the witness may answer. Yes, it does. Okay. Were you given um, some items to process for DNA analysis? I was, yes. Were you given DNA standards to compare any profiles that you may develop uh, with, from the evidence to known individuals in the case? Yes, I was. Do you remember who you got standards from? I do. Are you able to name them? Or if you need to refer to your report, you may, but just let us know. Okay, uh, can I read off the report? You may read off your report. What page are you reading from, sir? I will be reading <coughs> page two. Okay, go ahead. Objection. Overruled, the witness may do so. I received buckle swabs, so cheek swabs from Erica Patterson as well as Darrell Brooks. I received dried blood standards from Wilhelm Hospital, Tamara Durand, Jane Kulik, Leanna Owen, Virginia Sorensen, and Jackson Sparks. Is there a difference between those two, uh, the method in which they were submitted, the bubble swab versus the dried blood standard? Objection leading. Um, overruled foundational, the witness may answer. Yes. Are you able to do the same thing with them? I am, yes. And what is that? Um, just extracting the DNA off them to essentially a profile to the individual. Okay. And uh, how do you use those profiles that you develop from the known standards? Uh, we compare them to the evidentiary profiles that we develop. All right. Now you process many items related to this case. Is that correct, sir? Objection leading. <coughs> Overruled foundational, the witness may answer. Yes, I did. I'm going to direct your attention to just a few select items for my purposes, okay? Um, on page 7 of your report, Exhibit 91, you have reported on uh, analysis you were able to perform on some <coughs> swabs from the steering wheel of the vehicle in question. Is that correct, sir? That's correct. And uh, the swabs were obtained by another member of the crime lab, is that right? Objection. Speculative. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. That's correct. How do they get to you? Uh, they were collected by analyst Chris, or, uh, our chief now, uh, Chris Johnson in Milwaukee, and they were mailed over to the Madison lab. Okay. Were you able to develop any DNA profiles from the swabs of the steering wheel in this case? Yes, I was. What were your findings? Uh, it was a two-person mixture with at least one male. Can you explain for the jury what that means, please? Uh, we can look at a profile and based on how many peaks there are at uh, different locations, uh, each person will have a maximum of two. So if you have three peaks at a location, you know that you have more than one person there. And so in this case, uh, we were able to say that it was a two-person mixture. Were you able to identify who those two people would be? Um, Objection speculative. Overruled. The witness may answer based upon training, experience, and investigation and analysis in this case. Uh, yes. How did you do that, sir? Uh, I ran it through uh, this program called StarMix. Is that a computer program? Yes, it is. What is that, please? Objection. Leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. StarMix is a mixture deconvolution software that we use. 
previously, um, it was pretty difficult to distinguish different contributors and mixtures. And now we have the software, and that's actually a, a two-part um, program to do that. How does it work? Objection uh, leading. Overruled. You may answer, sir. The first part takes inputs by the analyst, such as a uh, number of contributors. So we'll look at the profile and determine that. But it also looks at the total amount of DNA amplified and essentially makes its own um, profile for comparison purposes. It will then compare it to the actual profile and determine if it's a good enough match. It will then generate another completely random profile and if it's better and a better match, it will accept it. If it's not, it will um, deny it and it will keep doing the accept over and over hundreds of thousands of times until it has a profile that is a very, very good match to the theoretical profile. Safe to say a human being will be very challenged to do the same analysis. It would take a very long time, yes. Okay. And uh, the software that you use, the Star Mix or STR Mix, uh, is that used in other labs around the country, sir? Objection speculative. I don't um, know okay. it's used around the country. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, it is. Is it uh, a reliable method of performing DNA analysis, in your opinion, sir? Yes, it is. Has it been accepted in uh, courts and other cases? Objection speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, it has. More than once? Objection, leading. Overruled, you may answer. Yes. Do you know about how many times Star Mix has been used in Wisconsin courts? Objection, speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. Since we brought it online in January of 2020, it's been accepted over 100 times in the state of Wisconsin. Did you have to receive some specific training in how to utilize this software? Yes, I did. And did you, uh, you complete the courses? Yes, I did. Did you use StarMix to analyze uh, the DNA profile, this two-person mixture from the steering wheel of the Ford Escape? Objection, leading. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Yes, I did. What conclusion did you draw? Um, based on it being a two-person mixture, uh, Erica Patterson and Darrell Brooks are both very strong support for inclusion. They're both Greater, or it's at least one quadrillion times more likely to observe the DNA profile if it's a mixture resulting from um, them plus an unknown uh, over two unknowns. So the odds of it being Mr. Brooks' DNA versus some other random person in the world are very, very rare, correct? Objection leading, and I don't consent to being called that name. The objection is noted. I'll sustain the objection as to the form of the question. Just ask that you rephrase. Can you explain for us what you mean by very strong support for inclusion? Yeah, we have a verbal qualifier based off of the validation that the company, the StarMix creators, as well as an internal validation have come up with. And um, the highest number we'll report is greater than one quadrillion. So this is higher than the number than, we're reporting greater than one quadrillion, but the number is actually higher than that. Okay. I'd like to move on then to the um, gear shift. Did you receive swabs from the gear shift of the red SUV? Yes, I did. Were you able to develop a DNA profile from the swab from the gear shift? Yes, I was. What did you find? Uh, that was a three-person mixture, also with at least one male. <coughs> I'm sorry, you trailed off at the end. A three-person mixture what? With at least one male contributor. Okay. Were you able to do any further analysis on that DNA profile? I ran that through StarMix as well. And what conclusion did you reach? Objection leading. Overrule. The witness may answer. The same as the steering wheel. So. Erica Patterson and Darrell Brooks are both very strong support for inclusion. Meaning that their DNA is on that gear shift. Objection, leading. Um, sustain us to the form of the question. Please rephrase. 
please again uh, state in layman's terms for the jury what that means, sir. Uh, both Erica Patterson and Darrell Brooks, there's at least uh, one quadrillion times more likely that it's the mixture of, excuse me, it's at least one quadrillion times more likely to observe the DNA profile if it's a mixture from H1, meaning the personal interest, and two unknowns versus three unknowns. The person of interest being Daryl Brooks? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name and just leading the witness. Um, overruled. The, Noted, but overruled. You may answer. Uh, we run star mix for the profile itself, and then each individual standard is run. So each person will have its own individual stat. So in this case, both Erica and Darrell are greater than um, 1 times 10 to the 15th, which is our 1 quadrillion. All right, thank you. Uh, sir, up on the table to your left, there's an item in a bag that's been marked as exhibit number 87. Do you see that? Yes, could you pull that down and take a look at that for me, please? Do you recognize exhibit number 87? I do, yes. And is that an item that you worked on? Yes, it is. Were you able to develop a DNA profile from Exhibit 87? Yes, I was. What did you find? That was a two-person mixture with at least one male contributor. And uh, were you able to analyze that further using StarMix? I was. What conclusions did you reach? Uh, Erica Patterson has very strong support for exclusion. Darrell Brooks has strong support for, for exclusion. Wilhelm Hospital has very strong support for inclusion. He is above that one quadrillion threshold that we have. Okay. All right, thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions at this time, but I would move uh, Exhibit 91 into evidence his report, Your Honor. Thank you. I'll take um, exhibit 91 is received. Any reason to keep the exhibits? <coughs> the uh, can I see that last exhibit? I, I, I'm thinking of the 87 with the sweatshirt. You want me to hold it up? Or yeah. Is? is that 87? That is 84. 84. This cat that I'm holding up is 87. And then he has 91, which is, his, which is his report. I'll keep that in front of him for now. Or he can keep that in front of him for now. Go ahead when you're ready. These, uh, these DNA analysis with uh, star mix, uh, I'm a little curious to get clarification on uh, what does it mean uh, when you say mixture? What exactly does that mean? <coughs> a mixture just means that it is more than one person present in the profile. So by, by it being more than one person present in the profile, would it be fair to say that that would constitute it being more than one person? Yes. The gear shift had a, a three person mixture, so would that would that apply to the gear shift the same that it would likelihood that it's three different people's DNA on the gear shift? That's correct. And from and for the steering wheel, a two person mixture. So that would be two people for DNA for the steering wheel? Correct.
Do you recall when you did this uh, DNA analyst? Analyzation, rather? I'm sorry. On any specific item? Or all of them? Uh, do you recall when you did the all the items, I guess? Uh, so, most of the items were collected in November. They were not transferred to the Madison lab until <coughs> the end of January. So I started, I believe January 31st was the first day that I started analysis. And then my report was written April 29th. So you started the analysis at the end of January? Correct. And you did your report in April, why so long? Uh, I generated 583 pages and my report's 15 pages long, so that takes a little bit of time. So you broke down the 583 pages into 15? Correct. To the best of your knowledge, do you know why it took from November to January for you to actually get the items that you were going to analyze for DNA? Uh, other than me picking up the case then, not really, no, I don't know. Do you know where the items were kept prior to you receiving them? Yes. Uh, can you stay for the jury for the record? Um, our evidence technicians, when they came to the Madison lab, put them into uh, storage where all evidence is stored. Were the items sealed like they are now? Yes. And so I'm assuming you had to unseal them, get them out of the sealing packages to do the analyzation. Would that be fair to say? That's correct, yes. And did you, did you yourself alone do the analyzation? Or did you have other uh, people that you worked with? I did all of the... Uh, <laughs> DNA myself. Uh, did you repackage the items after you were done yourself? Yes, I did. And did you return them back to where you had received them from, or did you keep them at your, uh, I think you said the Madison lab? I'm based out of the Madison lab, yes. Uh, typically, when we're done with evidence, we will return them to our evidence technicians, who will then put them back into storage. When the case is done, the evidence is then returned to the submitting agency. So the items are still at your lab, is from your knowledge? Now? Yeah. No. Well, I, I asked that, let me give you some clarity. I asked that because you said at, at the completion of the case, they would be returned to the agency that you received them from, so I was kind of <coughs> trying to get clarity on that. So do you know if they were returned to the agency you received them from already? I believe they were. So it would be fair to say in this situation the, the, the items weren't continued to be stored at the Madison lab Correct. A lot of these uh, DNA analysis, uh, I noticed that specifically DNA was analyzed for eight people. Would that be fair to say? Uh, sounds right, yes. And specifically referring to the analysis that had uh, three-person mixtures and, and things of that nature. What happens to the third-person mixture that is uh, excluded? I is don't it understand anyway? the question. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't understand the question. <laughs> well, I guess I'm referring to when someone is excluded, which I interpret as ruled out, there's still that mystery third mixture. It, it, can that third mixture 
be identified in, in, in some way or how does yeah. that work? I'm sorry. Uh, yes, we would need a standard submitted from another person uh, who they believe could possibly be the source of that DNA. So would it be fair to say for, for the analysis that you that you did that had three person mixtures, there's still a DNA that you that you found that's unknown? That's correct. And can you explain what is CODIS? Is is that pronounced right? CODIS or Kodak? Yes, it is. Uh, can you explain what CODIS is? CODIS stands for the Combined DNA Index System, and it is a database of known individuals. And when you find that a DNA, I'm, I'm guessing, I, I don't know if the right word to use would be sample, or I, I don't know if that's correct. Um, when you come to the conclusion that a DNA sample is not eligible for entry into CODIS, what exactly does that mean? There are certain rules that we must abide by for putting profiles into CODIS. Um, depending on where it's collected from, uh, pretty much determines the eligibility on whether or not we can put it in. <laughs> uh, one of your uh, analysis had a four-person mixture uh, were you able to determine uh, out of the eight DNAs that you ran if if any of those DNAs were found on that specific item? Your Honor, I object that it's vague. I'm not sure which item he's referring to. I'm referring to, uh, it says, brim, brim of maroon winter style hat. What page are you on, please, sir? Uh, six. All right, so you want the directing the witness to page six? Yes. That particular item? Yes, that's, that's where I'm reading from, yes. Okay, thank you. Do you want, did you ask the question? Yeah, I said uh, it, this one uh, in particular, the one I'm referring to, has a four-person mixture. Um, did, did your analysis identify any one of those four people out of the eight DNA samples that you were analyzing? Uh, no, it did not. Would it be fair to say for uh, pretty much all the items that you did analysis on, there were at minimum two or three person mixtures? Uh, no. And why would you say that? Uh, typically in our reports we lump the star mix samples together. If you look before that it will have items that were single source profiles. That's why I said the majority uh, or or if not all. I didn't say every single one. I wouldn't say the majority, no. Sorry, he looks that way. The is it autosom autosomal autosomal 
How, how do you say that word? I'm Auto, sorry. Autosomal. Autosomal. <laughs> STR DNA results and conclusions. That starts on page five. Would that be fair to say? That's correct, yes. And ends on page 13. Would that be fair to say? That's correct, yes. Would it be fair to say that page 13... 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 8, and 6. Out of all those pages, Only three have single source, and, and all the rest of them have at least two or three mixtures. Would that be fair to say? Um, no. And can you point out where the inaccuracy may be? Sure. In um, case I'm not being accurate. Yeah, on page six, uh, the first profile that you're looking at, cuttings of the apparent hair from the gas tank strap. That's a single source profile. That's one. Uh, the next, the next line, the cutting of the unlit end of the blunt is one. Two. Cuttings of the apparent roots from the hairs, which is CC4, CC5, and CC8. So that's three items right there. So you're looking at the actual heading? That's correct. And is that, is that it from... On that page, yes. Any other pages? Which direction is the books? Forward or backwards? Uh, I don't consent to being called that name. We're going, we're going from page six. Are you asking single source profiles? To page seven. From page seven, do you see any single singles? Single source, or yes, I guess it would be called single source. No, from page six to thirteen, as you previously stated, uh, those are my star mix ones. So each one of those is going to be a mixture profile. So the majority of them have mixture prof a uh, mixture, a mixture of persons. From those pages, yes. But there are many single source profiles before the star mix conclusions. Do you recall who you turned uh, your report over to once you finished your uh, report? For technical review? I'm sorry, can you, can you repeat that? For a technical review? Uh, what, I'm, I'm referring to once you uh, had finished your written report. Do you recall who you turned that over to? Yes. Uh, can you state it for the jury and for the record? Uh, Kelly Gajewski was my tech reviewer. Can you spell and that last name for the record? It's Gajewski, G-A-J-E-W-S-K-I. Thank you. <coughs> and do you know what happened to the written report from from that point? Uh, after she reviews it, sent it back for edits, and then I fixed those. It was approved by her. Then it goes to a supervisor for an administrative review. Fix the edits? What do you mean by fix the edits? If there's any typos or anything like that, it'll come back, or if I forgot to initial a page or something like that, 
help fix those and then send it back to her for approval. Uh, working with law enforcement, which, which you've stated you've done numerous times, in, in regards to the written reports, to your knowledge, are you aware of uh, officers taking a, a a creative writing course? Objection, relevance. Grounds. Uh, sustained. As to the fourth <coughs> question. Have you yourself ever took in a, a creative writing course? Objection, relevance, Grounds. sustained, not relevant. Next question. Have you or anyone you know filed a complaint in this matter? <coughs> no. Would you consider yourself an injured party in this matter? No. Ever directly talk to the plaintiff in this matter? I don't know how I would talk to the state of Wisconsin. Can, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. I do not know how I would talk to the state of Wisconsin. It's an entity. Not a person, not, not a person right. No further questions? Thank you. Can you redirect? Yes. Sir, on page six of your report, you were. Uh, identifying for the defendant the uh, some of the single source profiles that you developed. Do you recall that? Yes. And uh, one of the items you described as items CC4A, CC5A, and CC8A. Do you see that? Objection yes. leading. Overruled the witness may answer. Go ahead. Yes, I do. What do those items represent? Objection leading. Oh, overruled the witness may answer. Those are cuttings of the apparent root ends of the hairs that I took off the sweatshirt. I forgot to ask you about the hairs. Objection leading. Did you? I'm sorry, that was a statement. I'll move on, Your Honor. Thank you. You told Mr. Brooks on cross that you developed a single source profile for those hairs. Is that right? Objection. I don't consent to being called their name. And it's leading the witness. Um, the objections are noted overruled. The witness <coughs> may answer. That's correct. Who was the source of those hairs on that sweatshirt? States exhibit number 84. Objection. Speculative. Overruled. Go ahead and answer. Darrell Brooks is the source. Thank you. Nothing else. Right, thank you, sir. You may step down. As much as I would love to have another witness, I'm trying to break for the night because it is 549. So, with that, I will give the instruction that I've been giving every night to the jurors. So please listen. Do not begin your deliberations and discussion of the case until all the evidence is presented and I have instructed you on the law. Do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else until your final deliberations in the jury room. Witnesses do not speak with them. For their part, the parties, lawyers, interpreters, and witnesses will not contact or speak with the jurors. Do not listen to any conversation about this case. Do not research any information that you personally think might be helpful to you in understanding the issues presented. Do not investigate this case on your own or visit the scene, either in person or by any electronic means. Do not read any newspaper reports or listen to any news reports on radio, television, over the internet, or any other ap electronic application or tool about this trial. Do not consult dictionaries, computers, electronic applications, social media, the internet, or other reference materials for additional information. Do not seek, in that you are excused for the evening. I'll briefly discuss scheduling with the parties and then let um, Michael and Jen know when to report tomorrow. Thank you. All rise for the jurors, please. Yes, we good? Mm -hmm. oh, there's the door. Thank you. Be seated. Um, just briefly as to scheduling tomorrow since we had a late evening. 
How about we start at 9 a.m. tomorrow? Any objection from the state? No. From Mr. Brooks? No. All right, 9 a.m. tomorrow. Um, uh, for scheduling purposes, I'll take up, obviously, tomorrow morning, uh, whether the state can recall Detective Casey. Um, that would be your last witness? Yes. All right, then, sir, you have the option, should you choose, of uh, a opening an opening statement. Um, so you should be prepared for that. And then to call witnesses, I believe you've worked with Attorney Opper. Do you need a provider with anything regarding that tomorrow? Yeah. All right, anything else from the state? No. Any? I don't have anything at this time, Your Honor. If, if you excuse us, then I'll make sure I get that paperwork from Mr. Brooks for the defendant, and we'll be ready to go. All right, anything else from you, sir? Oh, yeah, we're starting at 830, right? Or are we starting at 9 as well? We're starting at 9. Okay. Uh, then Ms. Basie corrected me because we we have to discuss Attorney Casey's testimony, but we also uh, anticipate we'll have a motion in the morning, or I can tell you what it is right now, but I know that well, we're we then, I mean, if you think it's going to take some time, then I, um, I'll have the jurors come at 9, but I want to be mindful. I know, Mr. Brooks, we all had a long day. I'll do 845, and I'm not going to do any earlier than that. I and think what, that's fair, Your Honor. Need? It's a motion to uh, conform the uh, information to fit the evidence. Oh, all right. I'll what, take what that up. That? We'll have it in writing for Mr. Brooks in the morning, Your Honor. Okay. That'll be great. All right. Anything else from you, sir? No, I, uh, I redid the, uh, it's, it's not the exact order that I'm going to call the witnesses, but it's pretty much... Who you want, like each time block, morning or afternoon? Exactly. You'll be it's, ready to it's go just tomorrow. Just not exact order, like I'm going to call this okay. person. I'm this not going to hold you to that. As yes. long as it's by time blocks, if you want to call it that, but be ready to well, call probably witnesses. Just so I can stay for the record, so it would be easy to follow. Um, I did the names by threes. I'm guessing the first three would be the morning. The next three would be the the evening. And then Friday, three morning, and then three evening. Is, is that fair? I think so. Yes, I, we may be able to move faster, but we will attempt to stay in contact with witnesses if we can, excuse me, bring somebody here sooner if, if the court's got time. We'll do that, but that's very reasonable. And then do you have any idea how long you anticipate your opening will be? Open the statement? Yes. Uh, I don't think it's any way to gauge how long it will be. Just be mindful, sir. It's not the time to make argument, opening statements, as I like to call them, and what the jury instruction references, it's the road map. So I will expect to hear a lot of the evidence will show, the testimony, things of that nature. If it turns into argument, that's what happens at the close of the case. What do you mean by argument? If you're trying to argue the evidence and what it means, no, I'm not um, trying to argue but this will be what basically to lay out what the defense, what I would expect is for you to lay out what the defense or defenses uh, that you believe you'll be presenting evidence about will be to kind of, again, give the jury a roadmap, an idea of what to expect as your witnesses come forward. Um, and then at some point, um, um, I don't know whether you will make a decision to testify or not, but we do have to have a conversation on the record about that. So if you could just give me an idea, would, if you are going to testify yourself, if you think that would be at the beginning or at the end, so I can gauge when to have that conversation with um, you. I don't know for sure yet at this point. Fair enough. So at some point I'll have that conversation with you, though. All right. We'll see everyone at 8.45 tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. They are in recess. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry.